Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and most importantly, gamers all around the world, welcome back to another edition of BA Select Start. Base. We are back here again to touch base with you guys. We are continuing our little sub series of discussing uh, the top uh, 49 requested things uh, on the WWE 2K forum page which is in regards to the next rendition uh, of the WWE games, which I believe is going to be WWE 2K22. Uh, it will not be coming out this year. It will be coming out next year. So we have this full compiled list from Patrick Gilmore, the executive producer. Uh, we have gone through um, the first 25, and we are going through the next 12 uh, here today. But before we get into that, Dan, the man with the million dollar plan. How you doing? Good, good. Sitting here sipping on a Gold Cliff IPA from Kona Brewing. So if you're of age, feel free to check it out. Or if you're not of age, you can do what I'm doing and you can sip on water. Um, yeah, also, also a good choice. <laughs> yeah, especially when, uh, you know, you got a podcast you got to do. You know, it helps keep, you know, the throat uh, not dry. I feel um, like you're throwing shade at me now, Sean. I'm not throwing shade at you. If I <laughs> threw anything at you, Dan, it would be a gift card to the WWE Network, which, by the way, you can get it for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of just only $9.99. $9.99? That's right, Dan. I kid you not. I'm not talking about double digits. It's not $10. Not $100. Or... I uh, figured you were going to say $1,000, but it's also not a million dollars, Sean. But, Dan, it is, in fact, just only nine ninety nine. Consequently, check us out on anything wrestling podcast, AWP, uh, AWP underscore podcast one. I don't know what our handle is on Instagram. <laughs> Search AWP, and I'm sure it's somewhere in the list, but... Uh, yeah, uh, we're here. We're back. Um, we got twelve more things. We might as well call this the, the this segment the path to WWE two K question mark. Well, again, I'm not sure, but I I think they mentioned it's going to be two K twenty two. I mean, if they're still following the chronological timeline of the games, uh, obviously this year would have been two K twenty one, and so next year would be two K twenty two. But I don't know. Again. Uh, we might as well leave it at a question mark because we don't know. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah. Um, but with that, uh, we got some stuff to talk about here today. Um, and it's actually, it looks like we got a few things here that we actually haven't really ever discussed before or not uh, specifically. So let's get started. Um, first thing we have here, and I think that this is very direct and to the point, First thing uh, for today is it says no 2K originals. Um, so I know, Dan, that you got all the DLC packs for 2K20. Um, yeah, that's just I ordered, I ordered the, the deluxe version, so I got all of them. Right. Um, I got the normal version, which means I was excluded from getting any DLC content. Um, but I think that this sends a strong testament to uh, what everybody kind of thinks about 2K Originals. I don't think that it was bad. I, I think that it's neat what they did. But I, instead of getting, again, um, duplicate superstars, you know, um, I think we can invest that time into integrating the other features that we've talked about or even integrating... Um, you know, legends that haven't been in the WWE games or new superstars who haven't been on WWE games. Um, but personally, as a consumer who got to experience the 2K originals, what do you think? Where, where, where are you at with this? Would you want to see uh, 2K originals have a revival or are you okay with it not making a return? So here's my thought process on the whole thing, because I... Overall, didn't mind the concept of it. What I will say is that I think from a uh, from a player response standpoint, the lack of everything else is probably why 
people are clamoring for this to not be in the next one. If the game had been good otherwise and clean and concise and it wasn't a mess from day one, I, I don't think this would necessarily be on the list because it gave you four different stories. Yeah. And it gave you four different stories and a couple of little like side towers to do, which I haven't, I haven't at all cleared all the stuff. But it gave you alternate costumes for superstars. It gave you some neat weapons. I think it's a cool mode for unlocking stuff. Now, do I think that it should necessarily be like a paid thing? Probably not. It was so rudimentary at its core. And like I told you, there was a glitch with the bump in the night one where... I couldn't even, I still haven't gone back to finish it, but I couldn't even get through the Rusev, P- Pilgrim Rusev Tower because it glitched out. Yeah. And it just kept, I, every time I would beat Tyler Breeze, it, it would get to the windscreen and then it would crash my entire system. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that it was fun. I enjoyed the characters. Um, I don't think that the Fiend... Um, character should have been connected to that i think based on the fact that i pre-ordered under the impression that i was getting the fiend he should have just been a downloadable code and that would that be the end of it now i especially with the new day being kind of the host i sent you a couple of the the videos that are the intros and outros to each of those dlcs yeah it was fun, it was quirky, it was silly, so I don't have a problem with it. However, I would much rather the focus go into the other game modes that we've talked about and that people are clamoring for before they worry about putting originals back in. If it makes its way back in, while everything else that we've talked about so far is implemented, by all means. However, if they need to spend the time to implement all the other stuff and this doesn't make it in this year, that's fine. I think you're fine at that point to bring it back the following year because I think people will be more welcoming if everything else is already fine-tuned and, and figured out. Yeah, um, I didn't even think about it like that, that because 2K20 was such a mess at its core that it's like I don't think anybody really saw the, 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 the glamour of, of the 2K originals. Um, because I think that it's neat and it's different and it, and it allows for you to um, see the WWE superstars in a different form, sort of broken away from how you usually see them. Yeah. But um, again... Like, like, sorry, I just want to chime in real okay. quick. Because there's some cool stuff in there. Like, the, int- the entrances. You have the Demon King Finn Balor where he's like decked out in the, the lava rock. Yeah. And he, he like kneels down into the fire and then he teleports and he pops up in the next portal of fire or Frankenstroman where he's on the bed, he gets struck by lightning, he gets up and goes to the ring. Yeah. It's stuff that we wouldn't normally get, but because it fits those characters and it's within the context of, of the plot that they've given us, it's it's neat. And you can use those entrances. I haven't I haven't done the Frankenstroman one, but I, I made a character based on the Egyptian god Anubis. Yeah. And I, I briefly gave him the Demon fin, uh, demon King entrance. And it was fun. So I think that it, it enables a story-based release of a lot of the miscellaneous content and items and costume bits and stuff. So I don't have an overarching problem with it. However, um, unless the gameplay and everything else is clean, it's unnecessary. Yeah, yeah, very good point. And I, I, I mean, I agree. Um, for me, if it's in there, great. If it's not, it's not a deal breaker. Um, yeah. Because again, like we talked about, uh, gameplay first and foremost, um, all those features that we talked about is secondary. And this is kind of back burner stuff, where if it's in there, great, as long as the rest of the game is good. But if you don't have your stuff together and you decide, oh, 2K Originals is going to make a return. Uh, I don't see a whole lot of people going for it this year. Yeah, probably not. Um, if they end up bringing it back, and uh, I think I made a joke about this previously, if they institute some of the characters from the Immortals game that I don't even think is still active, <laughs> yeah, 
uh, I think that'd be really fun because there were a lot of a lot of interesting characters in there, like the Guardian Rock, who was made of rock, or Steve Austin with the snakes around his wrists. Yeah, but there was a lot of silly stuff in there that I think would be really fun to implement into a two K game as well. Yeah, one one last thing that I'll throw in there is that I know that on the road to two K twenty, when we were doing those beginning videos, we were actually even advocating that two K have a little bit fun this year. Um, yeah. And not just stick to, you know, NXT Rising Pack DLC, um, WWE 2K20 New Moves Pack. Um, yeah. and, it, and it seems like they had a lot of fun this year, and uh, I'll give them that. It, it's, it's fun, it's quirky, it's silly, it's satire. Um, but again, when the rest of your game is falling apart, not the best time. Yeah, and I mean, if you're, like, I'll, I'll do a quick little plug. If you haven't downloaded any of that dlc but you happen to have watched the show glow on netflix go for the southpaw wrestling one because it's it's funny especially because you've got georgia washington which is essentially the equivalent of liberty bell but it's charlotte yeah and you've got uh sasha memory banks who i don't remember the character on glow but a lot of the characters correspond to that and uh it's a lot of fun, and seeing seeing Tyler Breeze dressed up like a pseudo Mister McMahon is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's all in fun, and I think we can all appreciate that. But in due time, in due time. Um, next thing that we have here, very interesting, um, cross platform community creations. Um, essentially, if you're a PS4 or you're a PlayStation gamer, uh, this means that you have the Xbox uh, creations available to download. And if you are an Xbox gamer, that you have all the PlayStation uh, creations uh, available for download as well. Um, I think that this would be um, very interesting to see. Um, I don't really have a whole lot of complaints because whether you're on Xbox or PS4... Um, people are very talented. I will say that. Uh, I, uh, again, I'm going to kind of uh, advocate this. Um, as of recent, I've really been spending a lot of time in 2K19. Um, and I have downloaded uh, Tommaso Ciampa and China yeah. and uh, Rhea Ripley. And some have of you the- downloaded my, my David S. Pumpkins? Because you should. New number. Who's this? Oh. Um, <laughs> Um, no, no but you, everybody download David S. David S. Pumpkins because he's amazing. What's uh, what's your um, your tag? Like, if I want to search by creator, what's your tag? Oh Jesus, uh, I don't know. Just the claps, I think. Okay, because I think that would be easier. Because if I put that in everything that you have uploaded, it will come up immediately. Yeah, I've only got like four, so you'll you'll find them. <laughs> um, uh, who's the fourth member? Um. <laughs> But uh, in all honesty, um, some of these creations, uh, some people do a, a bang up job. Like it's you, yeah. you would think that they actually got a face scan for that particular wrestler. Mm-hmm. Um, so if we don't have a cross platform, I'm not really complaining because whether you're in a, on the Xbox or the PlayStation, it's very dynamic when you go on community creations. Like there's a lot, there's a lot of options. Yeah. Um, but if we were to have cross platforms, that would be great. One thing that if I could suggest, I don't know if I don't even know if this is maybe on the list later on or if anybody alludes to this, but um, if we if you can somehow have your creation like your custom superstar or a custom arena get carried over into the next game somehow, I think that would be really cool because it seems like year after year when you get the new game. It's almost like you have to press the reset button and you have to go and create your superstar all over again. But, yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, uh, where do you stand on this? Well, I'm going to talk about that real quick first before I delve into anything else. I think the only problem with that is you, the architecture of the game has to stay the same uh, from one year to the next, more or less. And all of the components have to stay available. That's yeah. the other thing. Yeah. Um. But that comes into play with the whole thing that I've been advocating for the last two episodes where I say, if you put something in the game, why would you take it out of the game? Yes. Um, 
that's an interesting concept. I think that that's not a bad idea, but essentially what you'd be doing is you'd have a community server that is just available to all future 2K games, and I don't know logistically how that would work. And that's kind of also my concern with doing the community thing, because I know I know that for a long time, uh, cross-platform stuff wasn't really available. Yeah. Uh, you saw an influx of that start up, I think, really with Fortnite, I think was when cross platform really became a thing. Cause like I can, I could, I don't play Fortnite, but I could play the Fortnite game on my phone. And I think also be playing against people who are on console. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Um, and I know some games have started to institute that because now it's becoming more, uh, more mainstream. I'm sure that once we get to the next gen consoles, the the PS5 and whatever, I don't re- I don't remember what the Xbox One is called. Yeah. But once we get there, um, I imagine that that's going to be pretty much commonplace at that point. Yeah, agreed. Um, but no, I I agree with you. I think that there's pl- there there is plenty of talent already in place. However. Uh, if you can expand the available library because you've got some people who are exclusively Xbox players and vice versa, then that opens a whole new new world to the other side because then the Xbox players can also download David S. Pumpkins. <laughs> bringing, it, uh, bringing it a full circle, I see. Um, yeah. Um, again, this to me, like if it's not in there, at least for me, it's not a deal breaker. I'm okay yeah. with it. If they come out and go, oh, sorry, we couldn't do the cross platform thing this year. I'm, I'm okay with it. No problem. Uh, because the, the PlayStation community creation forum, um, is you, you can, dare I say, find literally almost anything like yeah. logos, t-shirts, superstars, whatever. Uh, some people just... They, 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 they tackle it like it's nobody's business. So, but if it's in there, great. If it's not, life goes on. Yeah. And uh, I mean, with the fact that this is still probably two years away, roughly, uh, rounding up a little bit, uh, it'll probably be, I don't know when they're planning to drop those new consoles, but it'll probably be available on those consoles, at which point it's entirely possible we might see just a generic community creation server that we can draw from. And if that's the case, great. Yeah. Um, if they have to take baby steps to get there, no problem. Um, but we'll just, we'll have to see how things work out. Again, don't stress yourselves out if it's going to cost us anything else. (laughs) Yeah. Um, the, uh, next thing here is uh, weapon physics. Um, honestly, like, yeah, 2K20 was a disaster because you would literally be right next to the guy. You would swing a steel chair and it, and it, would, it would hit the air. Um, in 2K... Yeah, I know we talked about that before. Go on. Yeah. Um, in 2K19, uh, not much of a problem. Um, I wouldn't mind, and this is just a suggestion... I know that a few, uh, quite some time, uh, quite some time back, um, I believe it was in SmackDown vs. Raw 2011 where they had, if you broke the table, um, the table would, uh, crack into pieces and it would stay in the ring. Um, unfortunately, I think it was in 2K18 where they, they, they took that out. You would break the table and then the pieces would disappear and it would kind of take you out of the, of the realism. Um, or I, I can't remember what game it was, but if let's say your opponent is bleeding and you swing a steel chair across their head, then, uh, the chair would have a, a red, you know, uh, blood stain on it. Um, and I, and you know, even in some games, you know, the, the, the chair would bend, um, kind of giving it that, that, that realistic feel. Um, I think that if they could incorporate that, um, and even give us more weapons. Like, I wouldn't mind if we had, um, like, uh, thumbtacks or um, uh, barbed wire or, you know, the, the old school 2x4s uh, with uh, barbed wire wrapped around it. Um, yeah. 
they used to have so many weapons, and I don't know why, just throughout time, it got limited to steel chairs, sledgehammer, and a baseball bat. And I mean, yeah, with all the these originals and stuff, they expanded that now to where, like, like I brought up last time, you've got the laser swords and the pumpkin on the pitchfork and all that sort of like you've got you've got stuff, but yeah, just give me a generic variety. I remember in No Mercy, you had the ring bell, the stop sign, the chair, the the head, uh, the head. <laughs> uh, who who who? What is it? What's um, the what's the catchphrase that went with that? What does everybody want? Oh, that's what it was. What does everybody anyway, need? What does everybody need? But uh, yeah, I mean, as far as the the physics go on the thing, I I almost when you first brought it up, I I was almost gonna say I haven't had a problem with that, but then I remembered. Yeah. That I have. <laughs> because as long as they're standing, it's fine. Like I'll, my go-to weapon, because it's been the easiest one to use, has been the ke- the kendo stick. Yeah. So I'll grab that and I'll run at somebody and I'll hit them in the stomach and they'll be like, "Oh, my stomach!" and they'll fall down and then I'll just club them to death. Yeah. But after the fourth hit, I drop it, I pick it up, and then I start swinging and I'm just missing them and I'm like, "God, I'm I'm right here. Yeah. I'm literally next to you." And I think we talked about that right at release, that there was an issue with the targeting system. So I don't know if it trickles down to the, the targeting system. Yeah. Um, or if it's actually something with the weaponry. However, um, yeah, that's a, it's, a, it's a small thing that I think they just need to, they just need to tweak because it, it, you can't have that. I can't be swinging at somebody eight times, missing six of them, and then they get up and take my kendo stick away from me. <laughs> yeah. Um, two things that I was also going to say. I think one very cool thing that they can incorporate, which I don't think they've ever done before, is that now you have the option of if you're climbing the turnbuckle, that you can carry a kendo stick or a chair with you. And then once you're diving off the turnbuckle, you can swing it at your opponent as you're coming down. I, I didn't even know that. <laughs> Yeah, um, I just I, I think, guess I just haven't tried. Yeah, um, and another thing, and I think maybe you re- you you referred to this one time. Uh, we, we talk about creation suites. I think a create your weapon would be a pretty cool feature. Where you know, for example, it doesn't have to be too uh, complex. It could be a, a generic mode where you can, for example, choose what color steel chair you like. Um, and then you yeah. can, you can choose if you want it to be dented or if you want it to be rusty or new or, um, you know, if yeah. you want, if you want to wrap Weird that you'd be able to change the texture of a chair when you can do it to your clothing. Right. Yeah. No, good point. Um, <laughs> uh, maybe if you, like, if you really want to get creative, you can have the option of, uh, wrapping barbed wire around the steel chair, um, or, you know, giving it a, another upgrade. But um, I think that would be really cool. Um, and even if it, like, let's say if it, I wouldn't mind if that came with, like, a mini cutscene during a match, you know, the spot where the wrestler slowly p- uh, puts up the ring apron and then reaches down and then grabs that, you know. That, yeah, pulls that, out their special weapon. Like, yeah. even if that's a, a little feature that we roll out at some point where, like, you get to assign a special weapon to your opponent or to your characters. And then when they go into the ring, if you select that one, then yeah, you get that little cutscene. It, it'd be fun. Yeah. Um, and again, we've had that before with, uh, I know No Mercy had that. Um, I know a few other games have had that where you can assign a particular weapon to your superstar. So yeah. again, if we can have those small uh, features to kind of have as like a callback, um, I think that would be pretty neat to see. But yeah, just improve the overall physics of the weapons um, and if possible, implement new ways of using those weapons. So yeah. um, next thing that we have here, this is actually a big one. And I know that we've, we talked about this at first when 2K20 was um, releasing all the superstar entrances. Um, crowd reactions. I think yeah, they've, they've always felt a little awkward. Or a little like they're missing the mark. Yeah, um, right next to the commentary, um, crowd reactions are just weird. Because I think I told you there are moments where, like, just I'm just talking about entrances, where 
uh, a superstar, you know, theme hits, no reaction. Uh, you don't get a reaction until the superstar is visibly seen on the stage. Um, and that, like, to me, like, that's that's such a delay. It's like, it, it doesn't make sense. You don't, in real life, it doesn't work that way. If Steve Austin were to come back tomorrow, it, once that, that glass breaks, everyone's going to pop. They're not going to wait and go, okay, let's wait for him to come out. Oh, he's on the stage. Yeah. You know, and then they start cheering. Like, it, it would seem so off for them to do that. Um also, you know, aside from entrances, I think that even during the matches, I think, you know, when you go to pin someone, um, it's like, it's so mediocre. Uh, everybody, yeah. everybody counts along with the ref, you know, the one and the two. And then once you kick out, uh, sometimes there's, there's really no reaction. It's just, I would say pay more attention to ha- like, try to mimic what goes on, um, uh, on live WWE programming. Um, yeah, I mean, I I would say even if it's a even if we switch the the mechanic to where there's like a a dot like not a dial but like a like a one to ten basically yeah where like one is extremely negative boo boo ten is super cheery like Dolph Ziggler cashing in the money in the bank briefcase yes and then like the variations along there dictates the the different levels because a it all seems really canned like it's very generic b it doesn't feel natural and c the timing is is kind of off a lot of times yeah um i was just gonna say one thing um the one time that it seems to be on point is when you do an omg moment um and they start chanting this is awesome and they start clapping um, yeah. because it's kind of like that point in the match where some, like, a, a, a an incredible spot has just happened. So if, if they can take that, that, that mini moment with the OMG moment and expand it to the rest of the game, um, I think that would be, that would be awesome. But go ahead. You were saying something? Well, I mean, I don't know if, if it's an AI thing that you can tweak or not, or if you just have to stagger it or sorry, assign it better. I I I felt for for a few gen, like a few games at this point that like when a superstar comes out you get sort of a generic flat <sighs> yeah and like even when they sh- when they walk into view it doesn't really change and if you're ever going through the aud- the entrance suite the assigning the components Again, it's really flat, but in my opinion, your entrances should pretty much always, like, the music hits, okay, and the audience starts, so you can have sort of the general audience rumble, and then as soon as the music starts, they should be like, yeah, and then once the person comes out, there should be an, uh, an escalation, because now it's, yay, they're here, Yeah, and... You can, like, that, if you can modify that part to be a little bit more organic, I think that's really the part that matters. Um, And then even if they get in the ring, you can have, like, a little character assigned chant there, where if Cena's, if you're playing as John Cena, and he comes down and he gets in the ring, and then he's standing there waiting for the other guy's music to play, you just kind of hear a, Let's go, Cena. Cena sucks. Thing yeah. playing in the background before yeah. the music starts for the next guy, and then we do the same thing the other way. Yeah. Um. I just think that's that would probably be the best way to approach it. Is it just needs to really be paired off better because right now it just seems really monotonous. Yeah. There's no. There's no dynamicness. Yeah, um, I mean, when you have a roster of 200-plus wrestlers, that's yeah. 200 entrances that you have to essentially sync with the audience, <laughs> um, which I understand is tough, but again, they don't have a year this time, they have two years. So yeah. I've, I'm, I'm not a game developer, but I think that if you spend a solid month and a half, you can at least bring the entrances and victory scenes up to par as far as... Do you mean a year and a half? (laughs) 
Um, I think you said month and a half. I'm just making sure you... Did you mean a year and a half? No, I meant a month and a half. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, it, like, if you have someone who's specific... Like, who's specifically daily working on that. Um, oh, okay, I got you. I follow. Yeah. I thought you meant that since you have, like, a year and a half before you're going to release the game, it should be something you can do. But I, I got you. Yeah. Um, so, I mean... Yeah, I, if you if you can get that up to par, um, and like you said, having some side chance like uh, on the side would would be a very nice touch, um, and I wouldn't and, mind. And I, sorry, yeah, go no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say I think that the the different components can be attached to different things so that it's not all um, miscellaneous variables. Like you can have the I think if the crowd chant is attached to the mo- the the entrance movement that takes that off the plate. Like, those two things are connected. Great. And then you just have the CNSF chance thing attached to your character, and so then when it goes to that cutscene of them kind of, like, rolling their wrists or whatever, yeah. that plays. Yeah. It, it, it breaks it up so that it's not all, okay, well, we've got to build the entrances to where now the music coincides and, and the entrance works and da 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 Mm, that's my thought, anyway. No, yeah, and 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 I agree. I can I concur with that. Um, and I wouldn't mind if you give life to the crowd in the sense that, let's say, if I'm a if I'm a white meat baby face, and yeah. you know I'm facing a heel, but then all of a sudden behind the referee's back, I do a low blow or I do a dirty move or I do something or let's say even to just just to have fun with it. If I do the same move over and over again, um, you have certain things like the crowd booing or going, you can't wrestle, um, yeah. you know, uh, just to kind of, just, just to make it seem like the crowd is alive and they're just not pixels, just, you know, on a, on a, on a track. Yeah, that, the, that they're invested in the match. <laughs> exactly. Because I, I know, like, uh, in 2K19, I don't know if they, if they had it in 2K18, but... Um, they have the, the five-star meter, and mm-hmm. sometimes it would say, oh, 300 points for crowd drama or um, enhanced crowd drama. Um, but, yes. you, but you would almost get no reaction from the crowd. You would just get a, ooh, and that would be it. Um, I so, mean, I'd even get a, get a little bit of a kick out of a mini cutscene where you do the, yeah, boo, yes. yeah, yeah. Punch, punch exchange. Like you hit a specific button combination, and if you hit the, if you connect with the punch, it triggers that three second thing, and it's just sort of a fun little thing. That is actually a very good idea. I wouldn't mind, uh, and again, that could be a, a a turn off feature. Like if you if you don't want that to happen in your match, you can easily turn it off. But to enhance the realism, I wouldn't mind having that in there. Absolutely. Um. Next thing we have here, and I again, uh, this should be um, categorized with the other one. It says Spotify uh, interrogate integration. Sorry, integration. Yeah. Integration. Um, I we, mean, I don't know that they can get away with that just based on licensing at that point, um, because the I, I think the gist here is that if if we integrate Spotify, then we can use whatever song we want. But I think at that point, the game still has to uh, pay some sort of licensing fee to enable that. I, I, I would rather that they re-enable the feature of uploading your own music somehow. Yeah. Because that'll take something off their plate. And, and if you want to do it enough, you'll, you'll do it. At that point, I think the Spotify thing is being nitpicky. Yeah, um, I was also going to say that if, if Spotify is too much of a hassle, um, what they could do is kind of have like an archive menu where um, they give you retro theme songs, um, you know, just for the hell yeah. of it. Like, um, for example, they give you D'Lo Brown's theme song or they give you Gangrel's theme song. So that way, if you uh, download a Gangrel from Community Creations, boom, you got his entrance music. 
Oh. That, yeah, that's something that I've questioned for a while. Is doesn't WWE, WWE have the licensing to all of their old theme songs? They better. Why can't they just give them the library of themes and we just have access to pretty much all of them? Yeah, because um, I mean, if not that, again, just bring them back the feature where you can upload your own music somehow, and it doesn't have to be Spotify. Um, yeah. So, because. Uh, quick quick thing and we can move forward but um, so I sometimes I use my PlayStation capture feature where it captures uh, the last 15 minutes of gameplay and mm-hmm. if I have like, like let's say a good match I'll capture it and I'll um, and I'll upload it on YouTube however I have found that if an entrance falls in that video or if a victory scene falls in that video or if I'm in the main menu of 2k that the the music is is um is not in there that it's it's completely muted yeah. so it's it's like an anti piracy thing yeah so if they're so worried about oh well if we put an ability for you to have whatever song you want you might take that and then try to upload it somewhere where you're not supposed to um so it's like if you have that feature where you can uh mute the the song should someone want to capture um the video um, then I, it shouldn't matter. Yeah, it shouldn't matter, exactly. So, I mean, uh, it's just, at this point, it's just the case of doing it, really. Yeah. Um, next one, uh, I don't really know what this is referring to. It just says rivalries. Um, um, that might kind of tie in more. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if it's a, a universe mode thing or what. Because I can't think of what utility it would have otherwise, but it might be just kind of referring to a function similar to the GM mode or the universe mode, where you can build a relationship between different superstars. I, Without more detail, this isn't a huge thing for me, because I don't really understand what they're getting at. Because if you integrate GM mode or universe mode, I think it's already kind of built in or assumed. Yeah. So, eh. Yeah. Um, on a very quick note, I remember uh, in the GM mode for 2006 where if two people are feuding for the second or third consecutive week that it would give you a thumbs up insinuating yeah. that the rivalry has reached a whole new climax and that people are actually enjoying it. So, yeah, and it, would get, it would get more value. Yeah, um, and I don't know, so you had the option of setting up who gets to feud against who, right, in GM mode? Yeah, you had a couple of different ways you could do it, either you could run a, a start a rivalry promo, Yeah. and you just plug in two people and then they'd be in a rivalry the next week, or you put any two people in a singles match against each other and it would automatically start one. Oh, okay. And, but then, yeah, you, you essentially every week you put them in different matches or whatever, and you could get up to three thumbs ups. Um, but if you started to kind of screw up the rivalry where if you did a singles match for three weeks in a row and that was, and it was the same match, then you'd get a thumbs down because the audience would be like, this is stupid. Yeah. So, so yeah, but yeah, you'd earn the thumbs up and that would up the value of the match within your card and then you'd earn more points. Yeah, so maybe that's what they're referring to. I don't know, but um. Yeah, it make it makes sense within that context, within a general gameplay context, not really. So that's why I don't really know what they're saying. Yeah. So with that, we go to the next one. Um, it says fix graphics. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, Dan, and I I think that on our road to two to two K twenty, we talked about this. Uh, besides 2K20, um, I've never really had a problem with graphics. Yeah. Um, I always they're, thought... They're, they're good enough most of the time. Yeah. Um, I think that they do what they're supposed to do. Um, I don't really... It, it never came off as a problem to me. I, I, I would never sit there and go, oh, I hope the graphics are better this year. Um, yeah. to... <laughs> Does it look like Samoa Joe? Nailed it. Yeah, exactly. Um, but again, that kind of comes to bite you in the butt with 2K20 because there are certain superstars who just look off. 
like some like something's going on. Like like Randy Savage. I don't even know what was going on with that model. Yeah, I think I sent I sent you that picture where I was like, "What is this?" Yeah, I don't even know if his name was on the picture when you sent it. Because part of me feels like you sent it and I got confused. I went, who the fuck is that supposed to be? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, sorry, sorry, you can you can censor that with a sound effect. <laughs> it, it's all right. Uh, consider, that, <laughs> consider that you're one. Um, but, um, yeah, no, I personally don't have a problem. Now, I will say this. Um, the graphics in 2K20, that, that's, that's a no-go for me. I don't want a Peyton Royce or a Rock looking like they're cross-eyed or one eye is bigger than the other. Like, they just, they looked weird in those models, so... Well, specifically in the, in the menu. Yes. Like, that, the, the menu photograph was weird. 2019 was fine. Yeah. 2020 uh, 20 was weird. Because everybody looks cross-eyed, and it's like, what the hell did you guys do that that that, that became a thing? And nobody said, "Hey, everyone looks cross-eyed. Maybe we should fix that." Like, I feel like even I feel like if you had taken those models and instead of having them slightly turned, if you just had them square up to the camera, it probably would have fixed that problem. But uh, as far as the general graphics go. Most of the stuff in 20 was still okay. I know we talked about certain lighting issues. Yeah. But a lot of the face a lot of the facial scans were still okay. And my main critique is with your graphics and this is maybe more of a physics thing than anything else is things need to, to react on your models like real life. Yeah. So you can't have awkward hair jumps, you can't have awkward clothing jumps, but your people should also look like themselves. But, so yeah, basically the graphics, yeah, just be better. Yeah, um, quick note on those renders, I know that um, before 2K19, um, they would put in the time to give each character a different pose. Um, yeah. but I don't know what's happened. I, I think maybe a little bit of laziness has taken over where they just give everyone one default, uh, pose. Um, yeah, because you were able to give created, created wrestlers, you got to still give, give their own poses. And so it gave them more dynamic than the built in superstars. Yeah. Um, but back to your point, that slight tilt in 2K20, I don't know what it did, but yeah, those models looked horrible. Um, so another thing that we have here, uh, we've kind of talked about this. It says fix, create a superstar. Um, we've talked about this. I think there's a lot of things to fix. We've talked about, um, certain articles of clothing or certain items bleeding over into other items. Um, we've talked about restrictions. Um, I was even thinking about this. Like, I noticed that, you know, there are certain moments in the, in, in the creation suite where, you know, let's just say for one second, I put a belt on my, uh, on my superstar, like a leather belt. Um, I thought that it would be a neat feature if it allowed you to, like, overlap that belt with maybe something else. Um, yeah. Or, like, a different item. Um, now, there are some things in the game where it allows you to, like, for example, piercings. Um, if you give your superstar an earring on the right ear, um, after you're done, it, there's a plus sign, which indicates that you can add on to that. But, uh, for example, for tights or trunks or shirts, it's, it's a one and done. You get one item and that's it. Um, and I'm not saying that you should allow for everybody to put 40 layers of clothing on their superstars, but I think to have a little bit more flexibility um, to add multiple layers would be a really cool thing. Yeah, because I know we kind of loosely talked about the idea of having multiple hairstyles mesh, become meshable. Yeah. And I think if you turn it into where you can essentially do up to two of each layer uh, somehow, yeah. and still have it not look like a mess, I think that'll, that'll cover that real nice. Yeah, because, uh, and I, and I mean, let's, let's give credit where credit's due. 
Um, I think it was in 2K19 where they allowed for you to have two tops. So you could have like a tank top and then you could put a shirt on. Yeah. Um, so that, that's, that's, that's cool. But everything else was like, oh, it's one and done. You only get one. So choose wisely. Um, yeah. So, again, just uh, talking about fixing create a superstar. But um, did you, I mean, if you want to repeat or uh, emphasize something, um, is there something in particular that you want fixed pronto? Um, I mean, not really. If we're being entirely honest, for Create a Superstar, I think that at its core, it's been okay. So there's nothing that screams at me that needs to be fixed. Yeah. Um, what I would say is I'd like to have more more default face models. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we got about eight faces we're allowed to use by default. And then even when you make changes to those eight faces... The changes don't really seem that different. And I don't know if you've had that same experience or if I'm just lazy. No, 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 no. I'm I'm 100% there with you. Um, I don't know what it was, but like on last gen uh, games, I felt like you had more options. And when, yeah. when you would implement changes, so for example, uh, let's say you select a face template. So it, it looks like one face. Um, yeah. after spending about five minutes making alterations, that face would look completely different, completely yeah. different. But in 2K19, I could sit there and give modifications and alterations. It looks like, you know, I took one face and I created, you know, the non-related twin brother of that face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my Buzz and Trey look almost identical to each other. <laughs> Um, and that's the problem, because, uh, like, I, I think I, di I did more than just try to adjust their eyes. But the funny thing about faces is that if you change the eyes, uh, like, like if I took somebody else's eyes and put them on your face, you would look entirely different. Yes. And, and in the creation suite... If I make modifications to the eye, unless I do something stupid, like, ridiculous, you almost can't tell the difference unless I just picked a different face. Right, yeah. Because my second red and tray, because I choose, I chose entirely different uh, default faces, yeah. they look wildly different. But that's the only thing that made them different. If I had started with the same faces... They probably look pretty similar. They look like cousins. Yeah, um, and I know that maybe 2K's argument would be, well, you know, uh, you can import your own face in there, so there you go. But, in but I don't want every character to look like me. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, and I will just say this. Last time when I tried to upload an image that I can plant it on my created superstar, it wouldn't upload. So... Maybe that has its fair share of problems, but again, I would say if possible, make it like the old days where even if you do have eight or ten different face models, if you start making alterations, that face is going to look completely different from anything else that's on the, the face template list. Yeah, and I'll just chime in one last time on that, is the character that I did try to make that, that was supposed to be me looks just like Trey. That's how that's how messed up the the facial changes are is that they they literally don't matter. Yeah, um again, it's a, it's a <laughs> I will give credit that it's it's a bit of a like it's it's a complex uh system. Yeah. Um you can adjust the size of anything on the face or you can alter it and give it different shapes and whatever. But I just feel like no matter how much I play around with those with those uh, levels, that I still wind up getting ballpark the same face. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, if, if we can have more um, face templates that actually change when you make alterations, that would be awesome. Yeah, because like you said, I remember in the old games, you make one. If you move from fifty-one to fifty-five, the face looks different. Absolutely, yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> and now it seems like you turn 10 knobs and you get a, a slight jolt in the face. So, yeah. Um, next one that we have here, we've talked about this, uh, is online servers. Um, again, online is a mess. Um, we talked about how you would have to plan what you were going to do three seconds before you actually do it. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that the system, the servers that they have now um, can't hold up to um, the amount of people who are playing on them. Um, so I don't know. On last gen, I think that it was a whole lot more smoother um, ever since we moved to next gen. Every 2K game that I've played online has been... It's been a cluster. It literally has mm. been a cluster. This one was just, just online gameplay, right? Online servers. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the thing with that is that as we continue to progress, and as we get closer and closer and then ultimately switch over to PS5 and Xbox 720, we need to upgrade the servers because the graphics are going to get... I want to segue for two seconds. Yeah. Hey, I don't remember if I talked to you or just other people. Have you seen the graphics that are going to be on the PS5? Not really, no. They're amazing. Like, I saw, I saw a demo video of it, and it was... Oh, my God. I'm so hyped for those graphics. But, on that note... The servers that are currently in place will not work with that. Yeah. So they need to upgrade those servers in order to just exist. And I, uh, I think that that's only going to benefit the current players with the gameplay experience. If, you, if you're running a PS4 game on a PS5 level server, it's going to be fluid. It's going to be like butter. Yeah. Um, so if we do that ahead of time, then it's it's essentially future proofing, which is a very tech technology industry term. But <laughs> if you future proof your servers so that you're ready for the PS5 rollout, which honestly I, I don't know I don't remember if I said this already, but I wouldn't even be surprised if this game debuts on the five. Um then you're going to have a lot more fluid of a gameplay and everybody's going to be happier about it. Yeah, which I think would be very appropriate because we talked about like taking things to the next level because this is essentially your, your comeback story for 2K. Um, so if there's ever a time to really um, like take the bar to the next level, it would be this game. So... Um, I don't know. I don't want to hold my breath because they were barely able to get their stuff together for the PS4, let alone the PS5. So, uh, here's hoping, but uh, I'm not really holding my breath for it. Um, next thing here, it says drafts and trades. Um, I'm not sure if I'm not really sure what this is referring to. If this is maybe another universe or GM mode feature that everybody's uh, asking for. Um, but I think that would be a neat feature if, uh, like, for example, um, let's say if you're on a roll and then out of nowhere, it, this is completely randomly generated. Uh, you get a cutscene where Vince McMahon comes up to you and goes, um, it doesn't matter how much of a successful roster you have, it's time for a draft. And so you could have top stars go from your show to the other show, and then you can have, um, you know, other superstars from the other show come over to your show. Um, and, it, and I think that would be a neat feature because it would now allow for you to build a rapport with the new talent and also try to decide how you want to go about pushing or booking um, all those new drafted superstars. So my thought on the whole matter is that this is kind of like the, the other thing we talked about where without context within like a GM mode or a universe mode, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Yeah. But if we're talking about it within that context, um, it kind of keeps stuff fresh. Like the only way that it makes sense in any sort of exhibitionary mode 
is if it's if the exhibition mode has some sort of weird divide which we don't currently have and does, wouldn't make sense but yeah it definitely adds a, a, a bit of flavor to a GM mode or universe mode where if you're doing universe mode and half and, and you set a show and then suddenly you have something come up where it says hey you're gonna have a draft in two days oh well dang okay and then you have to do a draft and that shakes up you know as vince likes to say it shakes up the roster yeah um i it's fine within those two modes but again this is one of those things that unless it's within a gm mode or or a universe mode that doesn't make any sense so Yeah. yeah roll out those two modes and i think then we're then we're talking yeah um Moving on here, second to last thing, it says custom videos. Um, I think the last game to really take full advantage of this feature was WWE 13, um, where you could literally save clips from the highlight reel, and you can create an entrance video. It would have like stock clips, um, like retro black and white films, and uh, gothic clips or uh biblical stuff um and you would be able to put text and you could integrate all the clips from your highlight reel uh into that and essentially create your own entrance video um again since then they have taken it out um but i think that any type of feature that allows for you to create your own video whether you want to use it um as a titan tron or um uh, what any other place that uh the game allows you to use it in um i think that would be a, another neat feature to bring back into the series now i'm going to say because i i think you're i think you're slightly mistaken um because i recall it being at least something you can do in 19 i don't think i did it in 20 but there was still a create a entrance video mode. You you could still use captured video for it, but it was still pretty limited. And I know I bitched a little bit about how the inserting of images and graphics and things works in that. I think revamping the mode is the key here because essentially, like you you also going into film, understand how video video editing software works. Yeah. Um, I would, I don't know how easy it would be for them to integrate, and this isn't going to make sense to everybody who may be listening to this. However, if they make it more like a Final Cut Pro where you can shift the, the viewfinder, I guess, the, the line, yeah, and cut off small chunks to fine tune your video instead of using the R2R, uh, the L2R2 buttons to like, just rewind a thing. Yeah. Or because I know I complained about it with the David S. Pumpkins video that I made. Um, when when I made this video, I wanted a pumpkin to fly toward the screen, pause, and then go away, and it would go into the rest of the video. But the the default actions that they've got the only thing i could do was like a a thing that would do the pumpkin and it would zoom in three times real fast and then and then go away it's not a it's not a a user-friendly uh editing system because even somebody who has editing experience i have difficulty with that thing because it's just all over the place so if they revise the thing and make it easier to use and they give you more little tidbits and they make they, – they, I don't know if they can just give you more control, but if they put more transitions or motions in, in there, it might be better for people. Yeah, um, you're right. I'm mistaken. Um, it's just what I do recall is that in 13, the controls uh, for not only creating your video but for the highlight reel – were, were a lot more easy. Um, yeah. I remember, uh, this is probably a few months back, I was on 2K19 and I was like, you know what, maybe I'm not giving it a chance. Let me try to save a clip and go into the highlight reel and see how it functions. And I saved um, a small clip of like Becky Lynch's victory scene 
Um, and I was like, okay, let me try to go in here and let's see what does what. And if I remember correctly, you essentially, you would have a menu and then you would have a sub menu and everything was just a lot more difficult um, to work with. I remember in 13, it was very simple. Like there was one button to rewind, one button to fast forward, one button to change the camera angles, um, or one button to focus on a particular superstar throughout the clip. It, it, was, it was complex, but it was easy to use. Um, with 2K19, it's like, again, there's a menu in a menu. There is uh, tedious buttons for no reason. Um, it's complicated. Um, yeah. So, uh, again, if if and we... I don't want I don't want to say I don't want I don't want to give off the impression that I don't like the variation of videos that are currently available, but I'd like more and I would like an easier um, interface. Yeah. Um. One idea that I had, and I, I don't know if thirteen had this. I could be wrong, but. Um, if you would be able to essentially, let's say outside of the game, edit like your own Titan Tron for your superstar, um, edit it in a actual editing software and then put it on the USB and then upload it to the game. And you would be able to, to, to put it up on, on your superstars Titan Tron. I think that would be another great option too. Yeah. If you can either import like a dot MOV file or if just like the face, the facial scan yeah. link, the site that they have. If you can just, if you could just do it there, even with, because I think that's one of my my complaints is that if I was using a computer, it would be so much easier to do. Exactly. Yeah. But doing it with like the control pad and the arrow, or not the arrows, the control pad and the the thumbsticks, and then. R2, L2, uh, shorten the clip. It's, oh my god, it's complicated. So yeah, if you simplify it or make it to where it's an off server where I can go on to uh, custom titantron.2k.com or something, yeah, and I could just edit it there and then import it, beautiful. Yeah, and on a very quick side note, talking about complicated, you know, controllers and using a timeline, um, even the whole create an entrance has become more complicated to where I remember before it was like whenever you want your title plate to come up on the screen, you would press square and it would come up and you would time it. And then when you would press square, it would go away and the game would save that. Um, and now they have this timeline and if you want an effect on the screen, you have to put it in like to each and every part of the entrance, like the ramp, getting in the ring, being in the ring, um, being on stage. Um, they just they made it so much more complicated back then. Maybe it was the the interface that made it a lot more easier to use. I don't know, but um, it just seems like back then everything was more neat and compressed, and just it was a better presentation essentially. Yeah, I I agree. It's it's a it's a little bit of a mess comparatively at this point. Yeah. So with all of this said, we come down to our last item for today. It says update create a match. Um, I think we talked about this briefly before. Um, the create a match feature at one point was completely taken out, and I don't even know why. Um. Over the last two or three games, it's made a comeback, but it's still not what it used to be. Like, I think I mentioned to you how back in uh, WWE 13 or 2K14, you could do a one-on-three handicap elimination match inside of the elimination chamber. Um, and just small things like that, like be, being able to tweak the environment that you're in, um... Or like, I'm just, I'm spitballing here, but let's say if you had an Inferno match, but inside of the ring, you had a few weapons that you could use. Um, just a way of like combining matches and uh, bringing, uh, like being able to combine this match with that match and, and it, it becomes a new match. Um, or I don't know, like the old school gauntlet matches that they used to have or the slobber knocker matches that they used to have. Um 
I think they need to really update this as well, is give more options to the player um, and not just have it be, oh, okay, you select a one-on-one -on -one match. Um, what, what time limit do you want? Do you want it to be one out of uh, three, uh, two out of three falls? Do you want, how many finishers does each person start off with? Those details are okay, but I feel like we need more gimmicky options, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, Sorry, I just want to recap. This is match editing. It says update, create a match. So yeah, it's essentially Sorry. match editing, match creator. Okay. I I appreciate the function of being able to go in and put together specific matches. And I know we've talked about the three stages of hell match type. I, like even if that match itself isn't inserted, I'd love to be able to just create that where I can say, "Oh yeah, this match is for however many falls." Hell, if I want to make a match that's best three out of five falls, yes, I don't see why I shouldn't be able to do that. Yes. So uh, yeah, it's just, again, it's one of those creative freedom things that this. I think it's one of the things that the history of this game has instilled in us. And we've known it for so long, and we've encountered variations of it so far ago. And now we're here and we're like, dude, this is like a basic thing that we want. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think that this is one of those things that absolutely should just be able to be integrated and it shouldn't honestly take that long for them to figure out <laughs> i mean just remembering it if they're able to patch in create a championship in wwe 2k20 then you yeah. can most definitely patch in match creator with all its complex features for 2k22 yeah so um so yeah we have reached um uh, to the bottom of the list for today but um any final comments dan on anything that we discussed Nah, man i mean we we got 12 more to go and uh then we'll be at the end of this list but uh i think i've brought this up every time so far if you've got your own thoughts listeners uh feel free to chime in in the comments about how you feel about any of these or all of these and uh let's see what you got yeah and um on a just to kind of give everybody a perspective, uh, very very soon we'll be doing a video that covers the the new sort of side WWE game call, coming out, the WWE Battlegrounds game, um, and also The Last of Us Part Two is only twenty seven days away from release. Yeah, something like that. But yeah. I am so hyped. Yeah, ballpark somewhere around there. Um, it's amazing to think that finally, after all these years, after all the delays and the, the concealing of information, we're going to get the game in its full glory. So um, be sure to join us as we do uh, last-minute previews and uh, episodes for, for those two. Um, and until next time, always remember, if you're ever in doubt, just turn down the treble. And crank up the bass. We'll touch base with you guys next time.